welcome back again. Um, our next session is, uh, you might see it, fantastic sites and apps built with Joomla. Um, and um, we are here, if you, if you are just new at the moment, um, we are doing uh, 24 hours um, live um, J and beyond. Unfortunately, we cannot meet in person what we usually do and what we uh, all always enjoy and, and uh, uh, having a good time together. But now we are, we are all over the world spread and, and uh, but we are in some way we are, we are also together. Um, so next session with Path and um, you see the title and Path, please start your presentation. Hi, hello everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yes, I can okay. hear. Great. All right, all right. Thank you. So, good morning, everyone. To those of you this morning, and good evening, good night, good afternoon, depending on where you are. And and this is an interesting jab. I think the first jab where we are not meeting in person, where we are awake in the morning. Uh, we are not drunk ourselves to bed in the earlier night, at least some of us. So I hope, uh, I mean, normally morning sessions at jabs are not something anybody looks forward to because there's like five people in the room. Uh, so this is a morning session for me. Hopefully there's more today. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this. So really missing out jab this year, not able to meet all of you guys in person, but uh, Hopefully we can still do this online and thank you everyone at uh, JN Beyond still to make this happen and making it a 24 hour thing. So uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. So uh, let's get started. So today I've been, I'm going to be talking about fantastic sites and apps built with Joomla that you won't believe are Joomla. Uh, and I believe that, you know, uh, Joomla has evolved quite a bit, uh, starting from a CMS to being a web application framework to being kind of a Swiss army knife, which lets you build uh, so many things with it. And uh, it's just about uh, exploring those limitations and kind of expanding those. Uh, till there, there are no limitations at all. It really depends on your imagination completely. Uh, so before I, I dive into the presentation, I'll just give you a quick brief on uh, who I am. So that's me. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Parth Lavate. Uh, my email is on the screen as well if you need to reach out to me. Uh, so I'm a co-founder at TechJoomla, Takedee Technologies and AppCarver. So just a little bit of history uh, about Takedee. So Takedee started back in 2006. Uh, I started using Mambo, I think around 2003-ish, 3, 4. Uh, and of course, moved to Joomla with it. And uh, it was one of the reasons we started the company because uh, this is something we were using uh, while we were still in college to build some non-profit websites and it was a very very powerful tool and uh, it really impressed us it uh, kind of you know pulled us to start a business and do things with it so joomla was one of the reasons we actually uh, do what we are doing today being entrepreneurs and uh, building uh, websites and web applications uh, so long history with joomla uh, and we have kind of grown with it. Uh, Tech Joomla was started in 2009 to give uh, more focus on uh, Joomla based products. Uh, at Takedee, we do a lot of uh, consulting work uh, with a lot of technologies, Joomla being one of them. And um, two, three years into the business, we realized that uh, Tech Joomla was something that was an important technology to us. So we started its own uh, division, so to say, where uh, under Tech Joomla, we have a lot of products uh, that are very Joomla focused. Uh, besides that, I also try and volunteer in the Joomla community as much as I can. I'm a co-founder of the Joomla user group in Pune. I organize uh, Joomla Day India when we do manage to do it. We have been doing it every couple of years. Uh, one hasn't happened yet this year. We don't know how we'll do it. Uh, and yeah, I've been working with Joomla since the Mambo days. So that's Take Three Technologies. That's the company that I co-founded and uh, at Takedee, uh, the core purpose for us is to be a catalyst for societal transformation and uh, use technology as a tool uh, to empower organizations and individuals. So that's really been the driving force for us uh, to start the business. 
and uh, really use technology to create scaled impact. And uh, we've been lucky that way. So we have been able to get projects and work on projects that have been extremely impact making. And I'm really happy to say that Joomla has played a part in a lot of them. And uh, we'll see some of those uh, in the presentation today. So a quick note about Takedy. We started back in 2006. Uh, we have had an open source focused growth strategy, which has helped us get a very large uh, worldwide client base. Uh, we are one of uh, India's top Joomla based development companies with some of the most complex projects to our name. Uh, the development approach we take is very interesting, which I will talk about in a little bit. Uh, it's what we call as a product first approach to development, where uh, even we are doing large projects or small projects, we try to deliver a lot of value and optimization through a lot of code reuse and using an open source uh, kind of a code base. <clears throat> so that's our team. Uh, that's a photo from when you could still go on outings with your team uh, before we got into COVID. Uh, so we have a team of uh, <clears throat> 60 plus people now across uh, divisions uh, consisting of front end and back end developers, product developers, product and production managers, analysts, architects across two locations. Uh, majority of our team has uh, experience between four and eight years. Uh, our most senior people are uh, around 25 years of experience. <clears throat> so, uh, and a lot of this team does know Joomla as well. So uh, that's also a very good strength that uh, we're probably one of the larger teams uh, doing a lot of Joomla. Uh, across the board, TakeD works on a lot of things from UI UX development to web applications and portals, APIs, uh, business intelligence, big data, and data analytics. We are doing a lot of uh, modern abstracted front ends now with React and Angular, uh, large scale Joomla applications, obviously. A lot of native and hybrid uh, mobile applications, PWAs. Uh, so basically anything to do with the web and mobile uh, kind of deliveries. And we've also done some very interesting things with uh, Alexa skills, for example, uh, in the new age technologies and uh, some things that we are, uh, we're also doing some cloud applications now, uh, where uh, we're also delving a lot with ML and AI as, uh, you know, uh, offerings as a service. In terms of technologies, uh, PHP has been a large part of our technology base. Um, besides Joomla, we also work with Laravel. Uh, we have some Python expertise as well. Uh, we work across various kinds of databases, uh, JavaScript frameworks like Angular, Ionic, Xamarin, mobile platforms. We're also doing a lot of work with uh, data analytics now with uh, Google Data Studio and Jupyter Notebooks. So that's Tech Joomla for you. These are some of our key products. Um, so Shika, which is our learning extension for Joomla, is one of the more popular e-learning uh, platforms for Joomla. Uh, and uh, with this, we have been getting a lot of uh, traction now uh, as people try to learn from home. Uh, JGIV is a donations and fundraising tool for Joomla. Uh, Jticketing is an event management and ticketing solution. We have Cryptocurt, which is an e-commerce solution. So quite a few out there. You can go and check that out on uh, techjumla.com. Then we have AppCovers where we do a lot of mobile apps and modern web applications. Uh, you can check that out at appcovers.com. And that's it with the introduction. Just one quick note about how we build things. Uh, and this is kind of the key uh, thing in the organization that uh, any kind of a project we try and build, we try to uh, you know inculcate the spirit of open source in it. And this is a talk I give uh, quite regularly as well, where we try and uh, create uh, the development strategy in such a way that for whatever kind of project we get, so you'll see on the right hand side that this is the typical project process that you would follow, that you would do a lot of requirement gathering, you will design how you will deliver the solution, you'll do the solution architecture, you'll get into the core organization and database architecture. So what we try and do is that at each stage in this process, we try and map it out to something that is uh, either a ready uh, open source product available out there. So it might be Joomla or any kind of an open source product. And we try and see that while delivering the project, can we give back some of it? So the whole idea is that there's always two, two or three ways to design things and execute things, right? So we try and choose a way where we can give some kind of a contribution back. So if a, core contribution can be made or a new library can be released or we can contribute to one of the extensions out there. It might be our extension or somebody else's extension. Or we at least try to create a common project uh, code base so that across the product that we are delivering for the customer, we try and create it as an open source product. Uh, 
on the top of which you know specific proprietary stuff can be built as well so what we have seen is that the bigger your common code blocks are the less you have to maintain them over time uh, everything that goes lower in this uh, pyramid you're going to get more help in maintaining it in the long run <clears throat> so we have found that this strategy really works well um, and uh, luckily for us we have been able to find clients that find value in this kind of a strategy so because of this uh, i mean this is such a core thing in the organization that uh, everybody in the company uh, right from anybody who joins as a trainee developer to the most senior most person in the organization has a kpi which is a key performance indicator of contributing back to open source so they have to contribute something one thing every month they have to make a contribution it might be something as simple as you know improving a language constant uh, or it could be a major uh, code contribution but uh, that's helped us really evolve a culture that is open source first and uh, this is really something that helps us stand out and uh, of course through that we have been able to make a lot of open source contributions you can find us on github uh, under the take the and tech joomla repositories uh, and there's a ton of things that we have there and you will see a lot of this open source stack used in the projects that i'm going to show you so enough with the introduction uh, i wanted to set this uh, base so that you understand the, the projects that we have done and how we have executed them because it's not just about the building really large things with joomla it's also about uh, being able to build them in an optimized way uh, without you know soaring budgets all the time uh, so because we have this open source code base that has helped us and uh, we are kind of expanding that all the time, any new project that we do expands this code base. Any new project that we do also gets the benefit of all the open source code that has been built to date. So there is a lot of cost and uh, time optimization that can be delivered through this. So with that, let's get started. So I'll just start with that statement that if you thought Joomla was just for some small websites or you know websites in general, um, you should get ready for some serious unlearning. Uh, what you're going to see next is uh, some really large scale websites and application bits with Joomla, things that you probably will find it hard to believe that you're not able to do that with Joomla. So let's get started. So the first case. Uh, so here we are talk still talking about a website, but this is a website of massive scale. So a multilingual website with 17 languages and 50 million monthly hits. Cool thing about this, uh, this is absolutely Joomla out of the box. No custom development, uh, I mean, no extensions per se. Uh, there is a little bit of custom development, but it's all around custom fields and a uh, very interesting architecture as to how you could build something of this scale. So this is the website for UIDAI, that is Aadhaar, which is uh, India's uh, identity project. So uh, Aadhaar is a project that basically gives a unique identity number for every uh, uh, resident of India. So this is a unique ID number and this is uh, the world's largest project in that sense that uh, giving uh, an identity number to a billion plus people and uh, they are at a point where they have achieved a large uh, coverage. So very few people are without an Aadhaar in India anymore. And this website uh, basically serves as the front end for all the other applications. So the content management system, as well as the applications that power the online processes. Like if you want to change something in your identity or so this is like the social security number of India, but uh, it's a little different. So it's, it's like the common ID. It's the, it's your identity basically. Uh, so this is one of the biggest uh, Joomla websites in the world, probably um, uh, certainly one of the biggest in terms of traffic uh, in government websites. Uh, this is a multilingual website, 17 Indian languages, uh, also one of the few websites in India that actually have 17 Indian languages. So while India has a lot of official languages, because English uh, is pretty recognized here, not all government websites will be you know, done in regional languages. Uh, in terms of hits, uh, it serves almost 50 million hits a month. Uh, that's around 5 crore for uh, those of who you understand the Indian context. Uh, a lot of interesting user research, UX and validation went into this. And uh, what is really cool about this website that I really like is that uh, the CMS has been used very creatively. It's used very differently. Uh, and it has helped us ensure that uh, the people behind the scenes managing the content, uh, their job is way easier without uh, a lot of data duplication. So interesting thing is that this website came to us. Uh, so this was already built in Joomla actually. And uh, this was built by some uh, large IT company uh, as part of the standard uh, 
So typically, the way these governments work is that they will award a contract to a large uh, uh, software consulting consultancy company like uh, Accenture or a uh, HP or something like that, and then they deploy teams to build things like this. So, uh, so this website project came as what was to be a mobile site development project, uh, but we kind of hit them understand that you know doing a separate mobile website doesn't make sense anymore. What could be a better idea is to convert this to a single uh, you know, single-use uh, mobile responsive uh, web application, uh, and so it was not just a new project; it was also a migration project. And interestingly, uh, this had something like probably 25, 30 custom extensions in it. And the way we redesigned the architecture of this was that uh, now we have zero custom extensions. It also had something like 17 different templates to serve different languages. I'm not sure why it was done like that, but now it's down to two templates, one for your standard languages and one for RPL. And we'll also see a quick demo of this uh, to give you a good idea of how this is uh, getting built. Uh, so there was a lot of interesting user research that went into it because uh, the kind of people that access this website, it's a very large variety. So from everybody who is, you know, like uh, uh, having a pushy, uh, you know, pushy job, they need a Aadhaar card to, you know, somebody who is driving a rickshaw on the road uh, or a manual laborer on the road, they will need an Aadhaar card. So if everybody looks at this website, this type of people that access it is really large. So the kind of information architecture and UX that needs to go into this kind of a website, uh, that gets very, very interesting. Uh, so one of the things that we wanted to do was uh, because there is such a lot of information on a website like this, uh, it was very important that we reduce the time taken to access the key information. Uh, the right information is brought up at the right time and ensure a smooth performance across devices for all kinds of people. And when I'm talking about, you know, these people who are probably manual laborers, they probably are not uh, going to have a smartphone. Uh, they're probably going to use an internet cafe or something uh, with, you know, very limited connectivity to connect. Uh, so people might also use a feature phone, which is like, you know, having a very basic browser to connect to it. So it was very important that all kinds of people got a good experience here. So this was one of the key uh, uh, expected results of the project that it couldn't just be a great website for, you know, people with great bandwidth to access, but it had the performance was a very real thing here, not just something to get search engine rankings, but to actually make sure we could get to the lowest uh, you know levels in society where internet connections with high bandwidths are not really a real reality yet <clears throat> so in terms of information architecture uh, the way we changed things here was that uh, and i'll quickly jump to the website here so that you understand the context uh, robert could you help me uh, uh, here is uh, is my screen changed uh, can you see the website now um, well, yeah, um, yes, so I can see it. So it, there is a little bit of delay uh, until it comes comes to um, um, to YouTube. Um, okay. But I, no, I don't. You. So wait. Um, oh, okay, so now it's on, now it's also on, on, on YouTube. So go okay. ahead. Yeah, so yeah, so this is the website we're talking about. This is the UIDI Aadhaar website. Uh, you'll see that these are the various Indian languages that it's available in. And what's very interesting about uh, the architecture of this website, how Joomla as a CMS has been used is that everything that you see on this landing page, so this is the homepage, right? Everything that you see here is actually rendered from the menu. So all they have to do is manage the menu. What you see here, we are expanding that menu on the home page. So all the landing pages are basically expanded interpretations of the menu. So if I go to the ecosystem menu, for example, which you'll see that these are your sub menus. We have basically extended the menu system with custom fields. Uh, these are programmatic custom fields, not the Joomla custom fields so that you can add more to it. So for example, the UIDI ecosystem menu that you see here. Uh, so this is your main, uh, it's a menu item. For every menu item, you can also give it a short description 
and these are the sub menus of that and you can of course with classes and stuff define icons and things so you'll see that these landing pages are all menu driven they are all just coming from com menus and this actually changed things so in a big way because otherwise you would be creating modules and whatnot to render all this data and imagine doing this in 17 languages with something like joomla where you have to actually create 17 copies right so one for the english language one for i mean in some cases you could use language constants but if you're using menus i do have to manage 17 menus for 17 languages but that's it uh, everything else is coming automatically <clears throat> So this was a key piece uh, of innovation there of using Joomla a little differently, uh, completely using the menu system, extending the menu system with some fields so that you could render the landing pages without having to do you know, a whole, whole lot of modules to do it. Uh, what we also added there was that out of the menu, you could feature certain menu items. So you already have the featured, right? Which is like the default home page, but you can't have two of them. Uh, so here, what we did is we added one more flag in the menu which will allow me that if i have 20 things on the landing page in the menu if i wanted to show two things on the top we added another flag to be able to kind of feature that section so across all menus whatever is featured goes to the home page uh, so the home page is basically a collection of menu items that are you know have this special featured flag so the home page is also automated so you'll see that this is how that works so whatever is at top appears as the main link in the navigation highlighted section appear on the home page so these are those special flags in the menu and whatever is in blue so and everything is rendered as a card like this so this is your menu title there is a short description and there is another detailed description so this is actually just a menu item which has been extended with fields and this is not a hack you can do this with the plugin you can just write a small plugin to add extra fields so it's basically you just extend it so that's really great. So due to this, uh, the management overhead on this website came much, much, much lower than it was. Uh, what is also very interesting is that uh, we have 12 different content type variations using layouts and fields. So they have a lot of content types, uh, which I will show you in a bit. So let me go back to the website. So if I go back to the home page, for example, And I hope you guys can see this now. And it's synced up for you. So I'll just take a short pause there so that uh, the share syncs up because I'm switching screens. So if you look at this, uh, some of these are application links which actually link to various applications. So these are not all Joomla. Some of these are Joomla, some of these are not. Uh, but the UI is consistent across. Uh, you'll see that some of this content, uh, so this is Aadhaar in print. So this is actually again a Joomla article with an attachment. So this is a custom field again. So all the content types are Joomla articles. There is no custom extension used here at all. So this is a Aadhaar in print layout, which basically lets them attach. So they don't do any of their news. They just collate news from various news sources, scan it up and just upload it here. So this is a content type where you add a title, you, have, you add a source, you add a date, which are custom fields, you add the file type and it renders like this. Then Aadhaar telecast is again Joomla articles, but here you just add a title and a link to a YouTube video. Press releases are similar to your uh, media, which again, it's title and a download. So all of these different content types, uh, even things like tenders and whatnot, they're all Joomla articles. There is no, not a single piece of, uh, custom extension here. What we have done though is we have done stuff like custom layouts to display them in a different way. We have introduced a filters module uh, that lets you filter by any of the custom fields. So uh, a lot of this is open source and available on our GitHub. Uh, so uh, this was the cool thing that everything is Joomla. You don't need to do uh, much outside it. So this was the transformation journey. So uh, my screen should be back at my presentation now so now you should see that uh, this is the old website which was there the non-responsive old version that was created very busy lot of uh, information and this on the right is the new ux uh, from a, from the under the hood perspective there were uh, so 10 plus custom extensions i think there were much more uh, but the bigger ones which were you know basically they were using custom extensions to do everything that 
Joomla articles and custom fields could do. So we kind of uh, cut them down. So now there are zero custom extensions here. Uh, there were 12 templates. Uh, now that's come down to one template. Uh, there is no do content duplication. Earlier, there were at least probably three to four copies of every content to you know display it in different ways. So now there is zero duplication and uh, the content updation is really, really simple. This is just a look at the website. So again, what we saw right now is uh, Joomla at scale. It's not necessarily Joomla used to do something different. It's still used to build a website. It's used a little differently and it's used at a really humongous scale. So now we are going to look at something that is not really necessarily Joomla stuff. I mean, this is all built in Joomla, but these are those uh, different use cases that you can use Joomla to do really different things. You can use it to build a really, uh, you know, enterprise software, for example. So the second case I have is again, uh, I've put it here because it's very different. Uh, so here we have used Joomla as a backend to power an agricultural warehouse and cold storage chain in India. And this is really uh, hyper rural work. Uh, so this is used in a small uh, cluster of villages in uh, Maharashtra, the state I live in. And uh, there is a warehouse, uh, warehousing ecosystem there. And they use uh, Joomla to manage their entire uh, process. Uh, so very different again. So this is uh, Joomla used as a software piece. It's used not to deliver a website, but it's used to deliver a piece of software that can help uh, you know manage a process. So it's sort of an ERP for agriculture. So let's look at what are the challenges of these guys. So uh, just as a background, uh, you should know that uh, rural India till a few years ago did not have any internet connectivity at all. But uh, slowly that started coming up. Now it's really cool. I mean, you get uh, internet anywhere uh, and of a decent quality. Uh, but the problem was that uh, there was no ecosystem to actually leverage this. So this project is actually a very old project for us. I think we completed 10 years with the project, just a couple of, uh, just a year back. And this started way before internet was really strong. So when we started this project, we actually put a physical server in the agricultural warehouse where they just did everything locally. And now they are on the cloud. So the challenges here for the customer was, so imagine the rural agricultural warehouse uh, so accurately demanding forecast, uh, so the demand forecasting was really hard because they were actually maintaining a physical register to maintain how much grain was coming in, how many people, how many customers did they have. So it was really hard to get anything like that. Uh, so they manage a lot of different kinds of operations in this uh, process. So as a warehouse, you typically store grain there, right? So you will bring in grain in large lorries and trucks, you will deposit it, you'll probably sort of pay some rent on the grain. So renting is one process they maintain there. Besides that, they also have a process to buy the grain from the farmers. So they also give loans against the grain. So there's like three or four business processes that run there, uh, which are very different from what we see uh, day to day. So there's like a small banking system in there, there's a grain storage system, there is a buy and purchase system. They're also selling stuff to other people. So all of that needs to be managed. So around all that, the challenges they were facing, as I said, was accurate forecasting, managing the crop rates, the rates change every day. So it's almost like a mini commodity stock market there, where every day there is a rate that is announced by the government. These guys decide their own rate and they start buying and selling grain. So there is rate management to be done. There has to be communication with the farmers. Again, when you're talking farmers here, the communication has to be all text driven. So either a phone call has to go on their feature phone or a SMS or text messages to go they don't have a smartphone. Uh, of course, that has changed now, but when we started out, uh, there were no smartphones at all. Uh, it was very important for them to easily access and monitor all the farmer details and find their uh, selling patterns to avoid any fraud. Uh, deciding what's the best crop rate, uh, depending on the weight management, lab results, on the quality of the grain, and so many things. So a lot of uh, you know uh, process went in. Because all of this was manual, uh, a lot of these challenges are not even seen. I mean, there was no way to find out uh, what's going on. So what we came up with is a central solution. So we used Joomla at that time. Uh, this was built originally on Joomla 1.5 as a series of custom extensions on top of it. Uh, mainly it was only going to be, you know, six or seven people who were going to use it. But eventually the system has expanded where now, you know, uh, much more people use it and then farmers can access their data and things like that. 
so here they can do centralized crop management uh, so whenever uh, uh, so farmers can decide when they can sell the grain so they get daily text notifications whenever the rate changes there is a full farmer kyc system with data analytics uh, so uh, because they also give crop loans they have to do a proper official kyc which is know your customer where you have to take a photo of the farmer you have to add his information you have to authenticate that person add their bank information and all that so all of that is there uh, there is an automation of the weighing process as well uh, so imagine that this is not grain on small scale when they bring in grain uh, to store at the warehouse they bring it in these huge lorries and then they have these large weigh bridges so the lorry climbs up on the top of the weigh bridge and they take the weight of the lorry with the grain and then they take the weight of the lorry without the grain and that's how the measurement uh, happens on scale uh, then there is a rentals module for seamless handling of the process from weighing to storage to billing there is a green purchase module there is an advances module which is the loans that i talked about and this is the kind of dashboard so from there they can manage their crops and rates they can manage the direct purchase process they can manage their uh, loans they can see how many loans have been closed what kind of rental stock do they have how much is coming in how much is going out so these are just some screenshots from the system i wish i could show you more but we have short time but uh, it's very interesting to see the real process uh, on the ground how the big lorries roll in and how their entire process works and this is all managed actually in a local language so i'm showing english interfaces here uh, but this is uh, happening all in local language so this is some real photos uh, to get a you know idea of scale so this is the actual warehouse uh, they have a storage capacity of 20000 uh, metric tons which is uh, these many kilograms uh, the daily turnover is uh, something 160000 usds uh they have multiple uh, intra locations in the warehouse and they are doing various business operations like renting buying and selling loans against materials so this is what this was the scale and variety when we started 9 years back so now it's actually 10 years and the scale is now so they are operating in multiple locations they are also doing cold storage and warehousing the capacity has increased many fold this new business operations have been added and all of this is being managed using joomla so uh, one more great things out of this is that uh, this has also benefited the local farmer population a lot because earlier what used to happen is that uh, the rates of the grain uh, were uh, not so open so the farmer didn't know when to buy or when to sell one more problem that used to have a, a farmer in india has is that these guys have very small land holdings so they invest everything they have in growing a grain by the time the grain is ready for harvesting in 3 or 4 months they are really out of cash so by the time the grain is ready to harvest these guys are desperate for money so what ends up happening is that they will sell the grain for whatever rate they get but through the loan management system that we have done for these guys using joomla now the farmers can actually say that you know if this grain is let's say worth $5000 they can say you know i need $1000 right now give that to me as a loan against this grain and the rest i will sell when i want so this is actually helped bump up the economy in that area because now the farmers can choose when to buy and when to sell uh, for the granary and the operations uh, now they can operate on a handful of staff uh, there is a lot of fraud reduction the complete process can be monitored on a mobile app remotely there is daily automation of reports sms updates as i said the farmers have got really great profits so these guys have been featured in the local media because they have helped uh, farmers increase their rate so this is how the uh, rate has gone up in that area normally it would have stayed flat because uh, the demand supply problem should not have been matched but now because the farmers can sell uh, when the prices are up uh, they have been able to get a better average rate uh, for the producer this is just for one crop they manage like a lot of crops there so this is the typical process that we manage in the joomla ecosystem so the farmer kyc happens the grain is weighed there is a inward entry that happens then the grain can be purchased it can be rented loans can be given so the entire process is managed in a joomla application so that was something very different so now we started with a scaled joomla application delivering a huge website for a huge population the second was we went very hyper rural with a joomla application that was helping change the rural economy now we are looking to look at a very high tech kind of thing so joomla use used for iot For lighting control, power monitoring, and a jello shot maker. So these are 
three or four projects that we have done with Joomla and IoT. In some cases, the Joomla CMS and uh, IoT mashups have been used. And in some cases, we have used the Joomla framework, the lightweight framework only to power pieces of this. So now we are coming right into the new age with IoT and Joomla kind of making things happen. So case number one in this, uh, so this was a lighting control management project uh, done for a large lighting manufacturer, which was a Philips OEM. Uh, so they were using a proprietary lighting control unit and uh, the IoT company that we work with was going to replace this with OpenStack uh, hardware. And for that OpenStack hardware, they needed a interface. So think of it like a router uh, interface, uh, like you have for a Wi-Fi router you need a Wi-Fi routing uh, lighting management interface for that device. So this was built uh, using a combination of Joomla framework and uh, jQuery uh, based front end. And it could do things like device management, device grouping, scheduling, manufacturing management, warranty management, users, access control reports and all of that. So this is typically lighting control that is not home lighting. This is enterprise lighting, which you use in large hotels, large uh, university campuses, where you want to do things on a really large scale. So this is how it was built. Uh, so this was the overall architecture. Uh, so, so this is the hardware side of things on this side. So you can have many devices, depending on how many devices you have and how many locations, you put various gateways up. This is the hardware side of things. And the application server and web services and HTML UI is what we built in this. So initially when this project was piloted, these gateways were Raspberry Pis. And uh, initially, when we were doing the pro, you know, basic prototyping, later on, uh, these were replaced with uh, specific devices manufactured to the same space, but uh, the web services were kept constant. So we could basically use the same stuff that was built for the pilot for the actual implementation. So this is where Joomla came in. So there was a Joomla framework app, uh, which outputs both human consumable views as well as web services. Uh, right now, we are using only web services out of this, uh, which are rendered to a browser UI as well as a mobile application. So what you see here is uh, a little broken down view of the earlier diagram. So you have on this side, you have all the lighting, which has device drivers, which will be LED lights, motor, air conditioning, anything. Uh, practically, this could be anything, but the project we did was with lighting. So this was lights. Uh, the control was JSON. And uh, so basically, uh, the web services data exchange format was JSON here which was, uh, so the communication could happen over power line, wireless, Zigbee, Bluetooth, uh, whatever. So these devices could manage all those communication protocols. Uh, here we had a Raspberry Pi based gateway. Originally, now this is replaced with a specific device. Uh, this was mostly Python code. And then again, this gateway, you'll see that we had multiple gateways here, right? So these gateways were actually coming to a central application server, which was hosted on the cloud. So this is where the Joomla framework came in, where it was taking in uh, web services from all these gateways and devices. And this is where you could use the application using the web services for uh, the Joomla framework. So this is how it ends up looking. So we call it a LCMS. It's got nothing with content management systems. It's a lighting control management system. Uh, this was built a long time ago. Now this is probably eight years down. So this was jQuery mobile, uh, jQuery and uh, jQuery mobile back then for the mobile. And the backend was Joomla framework with uh, REST web services and front end is completely JavaScript. So you can do the scheduling, grouping, user management, all of that from here. So this is still in production. Nothing much has had to be changed but besides a little bit of maintenance. So now you'll see again Joomla used for a very different use case here as a backend for IoT. Of course, this is Joomla framework. Uh, I don't have a few other use cases put here, but I'll give you an example before I move to the bigger use case. You'll see that I mentioned three or four use cases here. So I've told you about lighting control here, but it's also another interesting thing that we did uh, for an Indian nonprofit. Uh, so they were basically looking at monitoring the quality of electricity in Indian cities and uh, rural areas. So they had built a smart meter where you could monitor the quality of electricity uh, and then this was pushing data out to a Joomla based backend where we could do graphs and stuff on it. Uh, there was also a Vodka Jello Shot Maker IoT machine, which was using a Joomla backend for the you know refill ordering. So I see uh, Robert is drinking a beer there. I am not sure you can see him, but <laughs> sorry about that. No, they can't. <laughs> 
I I didn't get the case you promised me, Robert. I was looking out for it yesterday, but nothing in the delivery. It's all six in the morning, so. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting thing for Robert there because he loves his alcohol. So this was a Jello shot maker, which was actually a physical machine where you put vodka in it, and it would uh, you know put out Jello shots of vodka. So the interface for this was uh, so the reordering interface, and this was something you put in a bar. So the advertising and everything that went on this, this was powered by Joomla backend. So I don't have screenshots of those, but I'll try to make them available for uh, the next presentation I do. Uh, but those are interesting use cases again using Joomla somewhere in the stack. So just thought I'll mention them. So case number four that I have is again now very different. Uh, this is uh, monitoring driving safety. So this is for a logistics marketplace. Uh, and this application is a combination of a Xamarin based mobile application and a Joomla based backend. Uh, and I'll just quickly show you what it does. So, one thing that it does is that, uh, so this interface that you see on the backend is all Angular, uh, but the backend is all Joomla. So, Joomla is behind the scenes. We are using user management from Joomla. There is a custom extension built in Joomla that is exposing all these web services. And then this is Angular based uh, backend that has been made. So, so to say, front end for the backend uh, that has been made. And what this allows uh, the client to do is that they can basically generate a job. And uh, so they have a pool of vehicles and they have a pool of drivers. The drivers are contract, the vehicles are owned by this company. Whenever there is a new job, they float up the job in the jobs marketplace. The drivers can come and apply. Once they pick a driver for a job, uh, and this ecosystem basically handles the entire process from loading the job to finding drivers that are available. And here you have to do a lot of compliance. So uh, this is for a project in the UK. So they have a lot of compliance around how many trips can a driver do in a certain amount of time? Has, have they had enough breaks and things like that? So only the drivers who are applicable to apply for this job can apply. Uh, the drivers get their own mobile app where they get alerts of possible jobs. Think of it like a Uber for logistics. and uh, there they can say that you know I want I want this job and then final selection is done by the uh, team that manages the application and then uh, the trip monitoring starts. So this what you see is the Angular backend, uh, Angular frontend for uh, the company that manages it. And on the next screen here is the mobile application that the driver uses. So when uh, so this has got a lot of interesting features. So it's got geofencing. So if the trip is from point A to point B, the driver can only start and end the job in the geofence of the start and end location. Uh, they have to do a lot of safety things on the way. So here we have used, uh, so there are some things that they do on their own. So there is like a lorry examination that they have to do, take a few photos, make sure they have, if they don't have any distracting items on their dashboard and things like that. Uh, besides that, it will prompt them to take the stops. Uh, so they have to take stops and rest every few uh, hours. So the app will prompt them to do that. It will use, uh, I think we have used here on the back end here for the, uh, so for the trip monitoring, uh, you know, geolocation aspects. So this will also do things like uh, monitor, are they driving over the speed limit? Uh, are they driving rashly, depending on, you know, the kind of movements they make. So we are using some, uh, so there is a, a, there is a geo app called here, which does a lot of interesting driver analytics on the back end, which we have used as a back end here. Uh, where we push continuous data to it and it will come back and give analytics on did they drive in the proper way, did they go over the speed limit, uh, what happened there. So it, it kind of manages the entire trip from the check-in uh, to the delivery. And then they can also do like multiple drops as you can see. So again, very different here. Uh, something that is in the logistics domain using Joomla. Now, this is my final case, uh, which is again, very different. This is for very interesting in today's scenario. Uh, so this was a, a cloud application that we built using Joomla for a client, uh, where what they wanted to do was they wanted to speed up the recruitment process by doing asynchronous interviews. So typically, uh, you know how interview goes, right? So when you are interviewing a candidate, you are going to ask him to come into your office, sit face to face with him, or even if you do it on a Zoom or a Skype call, you will be there and the candidate will be there. And this kind of reduces the scalability of interviews. If I want to interview 100 people, I have to block 100 hours in my slot. 
and I have to be there to take the interview. So the whole idea of this was, can we make this asynchronous? Can we make this process simpler so that the interviewee doesn't, interviewer doesn't have to be there and interviewees can come and do the interviews anytime they want. And then the interviewer can view them anytime they want. So this was the concept, very interesting. Uh, and uh, this was built with Joomla. So this is the case. So <clears throat> this is what I was telling you. So typically, again, interviewers are very senior people in the organization whose time is very valuable. Uh, and as I said, this can't scale. And all these interviews get really uh, expensive over time. Uh, if you look at the general metrics. So the idea was a cloud-based application to help interview scale. Interviewers can record the interview sections, questions, set up the interview and send this asynchronous interview to one person or hundred people or thousand people. So imagine getting an email in your inbox saying, Hey, Robert, your interview is scheduled on, you know, this, this day, or it's not really scheduled at all, really, because Robert can decide whenever he wants to interview, he can just click the button and say, I want to interview now. And what happens is that uh, we try to give this experience a real time experience. So the interviewee can see the real interviewer. They can do the questions. They have to actually take the interview as if it was a real interview. And uh, what uh, our metrics have found is that uh, these interviews, because they're video based, people are still very conscious. They are much more serious about the interview versus if this was just an email exchange, for example. And you get a lot of interesting metrics. So people can come in and give the interview whenever they want. And then the interviewer can watch the interview whenever they want. So that makes it asynchronous, makes it more scalable. So that was the final case. And what's very interesting is, uh, is that now the client is planning to put some AI and ML on top of this to kind of uh, see if we can do some emotion analysis on the interview that has been given to see uh, what kind of emotions the client, uh, the customer or the interviewee had while they were uh, giving the interview. So yeah, that's about it. So it's, I think we are uh, a little late probably by five minutes. So I'm not sure if you have any questions, but uh, I'm done with the presentation. Uh, what I would definitely uh, request is if you can look at the link here, if you can give your feedback on this presentation, Robert, if you can read this or share this, I would love that feedback. Um, Yes, thank you very much for your presentation and for this uh, um, case studies. Um, there's one question from the audience and one question I have. So uh, I, will, I will ask you first is a, is, a, is a question from the audience. So I think it comes to the first case you have and, um, and, it's, about, and it's about a menu. What I understand is that it's um, that you use the plugin to extend the, the menu form to add some fields to it. That's what I yeah. understand. Uh, but the question from the audience was, um, how you rendered this? Did you said some uh, template overrides or something? Yeah, so this is a module. So this is actually an override of the menu module. So typically a menu looks like this, right? So this is uh, what you see is actually a different layout of the menu module, yeah. which is rendered properly. Okay, so I think that's, that, that answers the question. So now my question. So. Um, so what I'm seeing from your cases is that you are that this is this is not a typical bakery site, and not a site for a fire local firefighters or something. What Joomla often is put into into this this area, um, you're doing really amazing things with 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 a lot of processes and all this stuff. So, and my my question is. Um, how how do you approach this 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 projects? Um, are you coming more from the solution part, or or are you are you saying in in early that you are using Joomla? How how do you how do you go to your customers and and um, uh, convince them that you are the right and have the right tools? Right. So we typically come from a solution perspective. As I said, uh, with Tech Joomla, we are very Joomla focused, but Tickly, which is the parent company, we work with a lot of technologies. So usually, uh, what it's always about the problem and solution, right? So it's about really going deep with the customer, trying to find out what their actual problem is, and sitting down with them and actually designing the solution together. Uh, the technology choice is made a little later in the process, Thankfully for me, I've been able to fit in Joomla almost everywhere. I mean, very few cases where Joomla doesn't fit. 
it depends on how you use it. I mean, if I were using it only as a CMS, I would have very limited choices with what I could do with Joomla. But when I use extensions, when I use custom development or use Joomla as a framework, uh, the possibilities are practically limitless. I mean, whether I use Laravel or Joomla, it's a lot of times, uh, for example, I haven't shown the case here, but this is a ecosystem of uh, web applications that we did for a European Union customer. So this was the European Union government affiliated body. Mm -hmm. And there we did a single sign-on solution, which now Joomla has, which Joomla is using for the ID project. But back then Joomla didn't have anything and I didn't want to use a, a extension preferably that was uh, non-GPL. There was some non-GPL extension. Mm -hmm. So there we used the Laravel project for the single sign-on part. But the planned websites, 80% of them were Joomla, some were Angular applications. So usually it's a mix and match. It's about uh, not being technology for so much. And this was actually a transition for us. Uh, we have traditionally been a very engineering focused, technology focused company. So we always, you know, walked bang into meetings with technology first. And mm -hmm. that didn't really work well because the clients really don't care that much uh, about how you're going to build it versus, uh, uh, I mean, how in the side of technology. They are really interested in how you will solve their problem. So if you focus more on their solution to their problem, uh, and then, I mean, whether it's Joomla or anything else comes like stage three or stage four. Mm. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. So that's, that's, that's the answer I, ex I expected, essentially. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, thank you very much for your presentation. It was very interesting. Um, so I, I wish you um, a good day. So it's, it's, it's not early, it's early. No, it's, yeah, it's, it's early in the morning, first session at JM Beyond. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, usually we, usually okay, we, yeah. uh, if we were in Lisbon, we would go to bed now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, thank right. you so much for having me, and uh, it's been a, it's been yeah, a it's great it's, it's been having, having you, and um, so maybe we see, hopefully, hopefully soon when this shit is over. Bye bye. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Bye bye. <laughs> Bye -bye. Everyone have a nice day, night, or whatever it is. Yeah. We, we have 20 hours to go. We have a lot yeah, of things. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye.